Uh, Dallas, I guess first off, just your group. What have you seen from them? Uh, obviously, some new faces in the room as well. Um, I've seen more growth than I have. Uh, things that I, sh I shouldn't say worry, but things that I should overthink on. For example, uh, guys are starting to play tough. Guys are starting to play free. Uh, guys are making plays, way more plays than they've made since I've been here, to be honest. But like I just told them, we need to be consistent. That's the one thing I'm focused on, us being consistent. Guys are better with their routes. Uh, guys are high pointing the ball. And so I'm able to sleep a little bit at night, not too much. <laughs> What's been the uh, adjustment to the new offense with Coach Babb, and what has been your relationship building like with him? Um, so, uh, me and Spav know some of the, the same people, um, to be honest, and so uh, we hit it off right from the jump, um, and then he would make the comments about the whole documentary, which makes me uncomfortable, <laughs> and so we hit it off even more, and then as far as the offense go, uh, it's similar to what I was in as a player at Florida, we ran the spread, and it was about running routes. And then uh, when I was at Marshall with uh, Tim Cramsey, who's now at Memphis, uh, he came from Sam Houston. And so we ran a lot of the same plays. So um, it was exciting to be back in the offense. And the guys are also excited, you know, but like I told them, yeah, we're throwing the ball a bunch, but one, you got to make plays. Two, uh, you got to be in shape. And when it's time to run the ball, you're still going to block. So nothing has changed. How competitive is it out there? Is you got, I know Dave's working so much now with the defense, and uh, you know, I feel like it's maybe the competitive spirit maybe it's, it's coming out when you guys go live or go team. What's that competition been like, um, offense versus defense in um, this, this offseason? Uh, higher than it's been since I've been here. Really? And uh, first, I will call myself out on that. So I'm a very competitive person. Um, if anyone know me, I'm like over competitive at times. And so coming here, uh, being on this level for me was more getting the guys to see that they had someone in their corner, you know, and I've been with them three years now. And so it's all about me being myself too, you know, talking with Armani uh, Winfield back in January. And we had a long talk like, hey guys, like we need to be better. And his thing was, coach, we go as you go. So I was like, okay, wow. And then talking with Coach Aranda a bunch, who uh, I'm pretty sure there's no surprise, but I love Coach Aranda. And it has nothing to do with just him not really yelling at his coaches, just the person he is. And that was one of the things he told me. And him and Armani didn't have a conversation. It's like, hey, if you go, these guys go. So for me, I was just making sure that I've been consistent with having my competitive edge and making these guys feel the, uh, the intensity uh, feeling a little bit of the, the pressure and the stress. Um, like I said, going back to when I was a player, you know, the whole motto was we make practice hard so the game is easy. And so that's what I've been trying to do this entire spring game. The guys have stepped up to the challenge. With so much returning production, um, who's, who's continued to step <laughs> up? Who's continued to take that step, uh, you know, kind of step up this year? So I can say this, and I, really I don't even know why I can say this, but it's just me being – uh, who I've been this whole time. I guess I hit it a little bit, but uh, I don't see a whole bunch of production. And so I don't tell the guys that because I want the guys to understand we need to be much better. And there's no guaranteed spots. Just because you're a transfer does not mean you're going to play. And just because you started last year does not mean you're going to play. And so when guys see me coming in the room and speaking like that and showing it, that's why guys are making plays now. But then I'll go back to what I said earlier. We have to be consistent with that. Keetron, uh, in his second year, what are you seeing from him? And how is he kind of maybe taking that next step, maybe getting more comfortable in the offense? Or? Yes, uh, so Tron is, is, is getting, so the, here, here's the thing that I was taught, and I have to give my coaches credit. It all starts with, uh, with confidence, you know, and that's something that Coach Meyer would always tell my receiver coach, Coach G, and, uh, he's going to hate me saying this, but Coach Meyer is like my grandfather, and Coach G is like my, my dad, and that's all they would preach. It was like, first, we have to make you believe. And so with Tron, I took the same approach, you know, trying to make him believe he's Superman, like when you look at him. And so we had a long conversation also, like, look, I need you to be uh, more consistent with contested catches. 
higher percentage on the 50-50 balls and be the guy who I know you could be. And so this entire spring, that's all he's been working on. Like if you watch right now at the practice, he's working on the drills that I gave him for contested catches. And he's been working on making his 50-50 balls go up. And then to really motivate him, I told him, hey, if you want to take care of your mom, that's what you need to work on. And so again, it starts with me. And because I've had the attitude, they have the same attitude. What's the vibe been like just in the building this offseason? And has it been any different from the past? Um, yes, to be honest, it has been different. Um, and so I would say uh, my room is the oldest room on the team. Right? And uh, it first started with me, you know, um, again, like I'm being careful what I say, but I'm being honest. Uh, a couple guys that are no longer here I was close to. And so it was one of those things where it's like, wow, it's a blow to the face at first. But then, when, you know, Spav came here and said, okay, we're the older position group on the team and we need to make plays and we have an opportunity to with this offense. So the excitement goes up. And then there's no secret. Coach Aranda is a, is a mastermind when it comes to defense and the excitement goes up even more. And so now with the coach, it's all about, okay, hey, if we want our guys to be better, we have to be better. And so amongst coaches, like we're competing. Like I've never heard Coach Curtis talk as much as he's talking this spring to me. Like, and I'm not even, I'm not even talking to him. Like I made a comment to the receivers on one-on-ones, not hearing him behind me, which I love that because, I mean, we've been together three years and, Shoot, he's like an older brother to me now. Like, I, I love him. Like, he's, he's taught me so much from coaching. But when the guys see us that way, then they turn the same way. And so now it's like a family, and everybody comes compete every day. And so that has been a change, you know. As far as before, I would say we were a family, but it was more, it was more about not stepping on toes, if I should say. And now it's like, no, man. Like, you need to be better. I need to be better. Let's get better. You know, like he made a comment to me uh, today. You know, it's like, I only see three receivers playing gunner. And so I'm like, hey, say less. <laughs> so I went in the receiver room and said, hey, you guys need to get on special teams. One, if you're saying you want to shot at lead. And two, if we're going to help the team. And so the approach that we're going now, I love it. Is that personality change coming from, from the top, just from, from the head? Um, that's the, the, the funny thing, and I'm going to be honest with this because I love Coach Aranda. Like, I don't think there was an issue with the personality in 2021. And they won the Big 12. They won the Sugar Bowl. And so once things start raveling apart, now we're looking for things to blame. And I don't think that's the case. And not to sound arrogant, but, I mean, I'm a man of God, but, I mean, I won a national championship. I won a Super Bowl. I played another championship, so I've been around winning teams. And it's more than just a personality, you know. It's about energy, it's about edge, it's about execution, you know, it's about everybody being on their P's and Q's. So, I mean, he has he changed? You know, to me, I mean, yeah and no. I mean, he still don't really yell at the coaches. <laughs> I mean, he get fired up, but yeah, it's not on coach. It's on us, you know, especially now with him helping at linebacker, helping, you know, the defense, being the head coach. That's a lot to have on his plate. And so, like, I tell those guys right there, I'm the head coach of my own room, you know? So it's not just on him, it's on all of us, so. What about, what about Josh? Uh, kind of a different journey than some receivers have taken, but I mean, he's, uh, again, a guy that, I don't want to <laughs> use the term produce, but he has, no, he has no. produced. No. Nah, and, and I'm not taking nothing from, from my guys. I love my guys. Did anybody tell you that? I mean, they'll tell you, like, I, I love my guys. But, and so I mess with Josh all the time. It, it's, I feel like it's a, it's a compliment, but at the same time it could be an insult because I say, like, we're very similar, you know. We're hardworking. We both had to get it out of the mud. Um, the only difference is he's a little bit more quiet than I am, you know. Everybody know how I am. Some would call me hyper, but I've been this way my whole life. So very similar, and that's why I love Josh, because, you know, he's reliable and you know what you're going to get. And so it's excited to see, excuse me, it's exciting to see a young man like him 
have the success he's having, but it's really nothing. He can have way more than that. So. What does a guy like Ashton add to the group? And maybe his skill set and maybe familiarity with Coach Spavadol, does that help at all too? Um, so what Ashton adds to the room was the, uh, the intensity I was talking about. You know, he is a fiery guy, you know, um, very athletic, excuse me, um, could jump out of the gym. Hands are, are a little bit smaller than mine, and I'm 6'4", and he's 5'9", you know. And so, uh, like I said, like super athletic, very intense, uh, and to put it in words so we understand, just a dog, you know. And so it has trinkled to some of the other guys in the room. And it's exciting to see, you know. And so it helps me also with the way I am. Like I've been telling the guys in meetings, practice, walk through all these things. It's Coach Baker and that stuff in. Now I'm back to Coach Baker. So. You mentioned earlier it's, it's on, on you guys. When you look at around and walk around here, Dave, what do you think will define this team this year? Dealing with adversity. No, I think that. That has been the, the thing, you know. Uh, I think we've had good players from the time, time I've been here and before that. So it wasn't that we didn't have players. Uh, it wasn't that the guys, I guess I'm contradicting myself, but it wasn't that they weren't tough. But dealing with adversity, you know, when adversity hit, staying together. And so that has been the big thing. But us as coaches, making them feel that way. Like, you know, you made a mistake. I'm going to coach you up, but I'm also going to get on you, you know, because it's unacceptable. And so that's what I was saying before, you know, teaching them how to deal with adversity and making it very uncomfortable.